It's officially been over a year now since the virus was first discovered, and it won't be very long before we're officially a year into the pandemic. With that being said, it seems the efforts of some of the best all around the world have made major progress in not only stopping the spread, but eradicating the disease altogether. Some people say a vaccine isn't a cure, while others make the argument that if a disease is eradicated, such as smallpox, then it's a cure to the problem, which can be seen as a cure in general. Regardless of how you see things, what's most important is that we're making progress, and hopefully soon, this will all be behind us. Yet it's not as as simple as that. Today on Life's Biggest Questions, we're asking what's going to happen now that we have what appears to be a cure of sorts. Make sure you give this video a good old thumbs up, but for now, let's get right into things. To start off, let's talk about all the vaccines and other practices being mentioned in the media that are leading the public to believe the end of the pandemic is near. Not to say that they're wrong, but I'll let you decide for yourself based on the information I pass along. You likely heard back on November 9th when Pfizer, who alongside BioNTech, announced they have a vaccine with a more than 90% effectiveness rate. People got excited, the stock market went all over the place, I lost some money, and then I realized I should stick to entertainment. <laughs> And just a few days later, Moderna, another pharmaceutical company, announced their vaccine protected 94.5% of the people in their clinical trial. Not only was this seen as a win because we'd have double the vaccines, but this one was even more effective. Shortly after Moderna's announcement, Pfizer and Co. would announce their vaccine is actually 95% effective. Feels like these companies are playing a game of the price is right, just overcutting each other by the smallest little percentages there. I may announce that I have a vaccine, and it's going to be 95.1% effective, Bob. Aside from the previously mentioned vaccines, recently more scientific studies were announced in which it's believed that specific mouthwashes could help kill the virus in your saliva within 30 seconds. However, these studies are still very early on and need to be peer reviewed before we all start going out to buy Listerine. I mean, it helps with gingivitis, so maybe get it anyways. It's always important to have a clean mouth. But it seems some people aren't so set on the idea that a mouthwash is going to put an end to the pandemic because it won't. If anything, it may help reduce the spread as they say washing your hands and wearing a mask does, but it's not necessarily being hailed as the cure for the disease, which has killed over 1.34 million people at the time of this recording. Now the good news is, there is actually more than just one vaccine or two as I previously mentioned. Russia claimed months ago they created one and Putin even said he gave it to one of his daughters. Can't confirm that he actually did, but we can take his word for it, I guess. Uh, I don't know. Ah, uh, well, okay. Oxford University and AstraZeneca partnered up to create a vaccine which has been determined to give those injected a, I quote, strong immune response to the virus. Lastly, Gamalia Institute in Russia is responsible for Sputnik V, which is believed to be 92% effective in the clinical trials which took place. The good news here is that there's very promising signs that multiple companies and countries are going to be creating vaccines which can hopefully put an end to this pandemic and save hundreds of thousands, if not millions of lives. However, there is certainly a catch. Not everyone is so keen on the idea of taking a vaccine, which is just a few months old. Meaning even if it's proven to be 100% effective, another hurdle to get over is being able to convince the entire world to take it. Now regardless of where you stand on being pro-vaccine or anti-vaccine, the reality is that everyone is entitled to an opinion, especially when it comes to what they're putting in their body. And this isn't to get confused with people who believe that some vaccines can lead to younger children developing neurological issues or other problems as they grow older. No, there are still tons of people who are pro-vaccine but are still wary and not so into the idea of getting a COVID-19 vaccine, at least until some more research is done. Some reports claim that although people can't be forced to get a vaccine, at least as of this recording, that some companies or even countries may make things incredibly tough on those who deny it. For example, there were reports that Ticketmaster would track the vaccine status of those wanting to attend concerts and live events, turning away anyone without a vaccine. However, after things got completely blown out of proportion, it was revealed they were just talking about a potential plan in which people would either need to confirm they were vaccinated or show proof of a negative COVID test within three days of said event. They even said they don't have the authority to force anything on anyone. That being said, in Ontario and New Brunswick, for example, kids need to be vaccinated from certain things in order to attend public school. Although the rule isn't Canada-wide, it's it's not such a crazy thought that eventually it's implemented across the country. Now just to be clear, that likely won't be the case for COVID-19 vaccines. Odds are, if even half of the world is willing to get a vaccine, then the numbers will significantly go down and hopefully containing the virus will be much, much more manageable. As years go on, people would likely be more willing to get the vaccine, assuming those initially willing to do so don't have any negative health experiences in relation to it. But it's also quite possible that much like the masks, those who get vaccinated and those who refuse to do so initially divide not only the country, but the world. Of course, wearing a mask and getting a vaccine are two very, very different cases. But still, as we have clearly seen, for whatever reason, if someone disagrees with your beliefs and what you do, it tends to cause arguments and potentially even fights. There have been tons of videos where anti-mask people literally start yelling and mocking those who wear masks. Why, I couldn't tell you, but as we've clearly seen, people feel very strongly about those who wear or don't wear masks, 
and it's led to violence for unexplainable reasons. Again, you could argue that for those not wearing masks, it put people that wear masks in danger at risk, so that is a fair reason. I'm more so the anti-maskers that just kind of yell at and berate the people that wear masks for no apparent reason. That's kind of what I was saying. Now, of those willing to get the vaccine, it seems the most common consensus is that it would be going to the elderly or those most at risk of not only contracting COVID, but having more severe cases. Of course, this includes those who are also immune compromised or more susceptible to being infected. How they're going to decide exactly who gets it isn't very clear. It could be by age, but it seems that would be too generic or generalized. There are 90 year olds who are much healthier than 70 year olds. Just because someone is 90, they shouldn't be given first dibs on the vaccine, again, assuming they're in significantly better health than, say, someone who is 70. It's also important to take into consideration not only how quickly they can make the vaccine, but how readily available they're going to be. Specifically using the UK, for example, they've ordered 10 million doses of the Pfizer BioNTech vaccine, which are expected to be ready by the end of 2020. They're also expected to order another 30 million doses. The UK is also expecting to get the Moderna vaccine by spring, totaling in 5 million doses or so. How and which countries get which vaccine also seems unclear. Of course, there is tons of data and reasoning behind why things are being done the way they are. It's not like they're pulling country names out of a hat and saying, yep, that's the one. How severely each country is being affected, what the trend is looking like, and even how much money the governments have to offer are likely all being considered when factoring in who gets which vaccine and how many doses. Another important thing to mention is how they get transported and how long they last. Pfizer's vaccine needs to be transported in a special dry ice pack, holding 5,000 doses each. The country receiving the vaccine can then freeze it for up to six months in what's referred to as a freezer farm. And if they don't go to the freezer farm, the vaccine has 10 days before it needs to be stored in a fridge, where it can last for up to seven days between two and eight degrees Celsius. Moderna's vaccine can be stored in minus 20 degrees Celsius for up to six months. Again, how these decisions are made, I couldn't tell you, but I'm not a scientist. With that being said, I do trust professionals are doing all they can. So let's say literally half the world gets the vaccine, although it wouldn't be an even split and some countries, states, or even cities would be more for or against the vaccine. At the end of the day, if enough people were to get it, hopefully the spread would significantly slow and we'd be able to get a grip on the spread going back to our normal lives. But what is now considered normal? At what point do we no longer need to wear masks, if ever? Unfortunately, because I'm not a psychic, I can't say for sure how things will look when all is said and done and things go back to normal, for lack of a better word. Obviously, the hope is we return to how life was pre-COVID, but I think this pandemic has changed most of us for the better. We've realized that we can't take things for granted as easily, and it's also more likely than not that, at least in the near future, the human race is much more clean. In general, the world's population will likely continue to be hyper-aware of these things, such as how frequently people wash their hands, using sanitizer after touching things that could be covered in bacteria, such as door handles, and even how people live their day-to-day -day lives. All in all, hopefully this all comes to an end sooner than later. Even if the virus is eventually eradicated, which hopefully does happen in the near future, unfortunately, this won't be the last major world issue we find ourselves dealing with. But with that being said, as we can see, the human race always finds a way to deal with the situation or problem at hand. Researchers, scientists, and companies have spent days, weeks, months, and countless hours working tirelessly to figure out how to put an end to all this madness. And when all is said and done, I think the human race will not only realize how much of a gift life truly is, but also that any obstacle in life can be a lesson learned. Now, as always, guys, let me know your thoughts on this one down below. For now, let's do some common replies from the video. What if Obama was president right now? Cam's channel said the comments are going to be a war zone. I could tell, LOL. Yeah, I loved it. I love Warzone. My KD is at like one. Oh no, I'm not even. I'm at like 0.75. It's really not that good because I started kind of. But I've gotten a lot better. But if you guys play Warzone, let me know and maybe we can play together. I know that's not what you were saying, but I just wanted to throw in a Warzone comment there because I like play Warzone. Evan Dagger said, "Video idea. What if The Rock ran for president? I think we did a video on that. I'm almost positive it was 2020. What if The Rock won?" 2020 presidential election. I'm pretty sure. So check it out. Angel Pool said, "What if Kevin McAllister was home alone during the purge?" That, my friend. You may be onto something. I, I like that idea. Maybe we'll just make like a little fan made version of it. Or maybe we cast Nicole and we're like, yo, you're in the purge now, you're home alone. Figure it out. I think it'd be pretty cool. You know, like Home Alone 5, because I think they came out with four of them or three, I don't know. Stopped watching after the first. Anyways, guys, that's it for this one. I've been your host, Jared Bronstein. We'll see you soon. They say Home Alone 2 is the best one, isn't it? Oxford University and Astro. <laughs> that was just, cause, dude, that's it's true. Like, or even countries may take. Uh, I f Where should I go from? As years. Yeah. <laughs> as years go on, people would likely be more. As years go on, people. Will, uh, dude, it's like I f once and then I just keep stumbling. Divide the. Uh, not only how quickly they can make the vaccine, but how readily. Which are except. Can I go from the witch? Yeah. Yeah, for sure.
Yeah. Okay. They're also expected to order another. Th they're also expected to order another. <sighs> I feel like I sped through that. Was that really fast? Or did you understand everything I said? I did. Okay. As long as you understood, that's all I care about. Like.